Welcome back, Zerka fans, to Nanolens of Dawn. I'm your host, Dominic Orshad, here, and we have another replay, this time a 2v2 on Aquatic Divide. Fireplug and 400 with air and tanks, respectively, going up against Etsuri and Dynefreund, running Amph and tanks, respectively. And this is going to be interesting, because I haven't seen Aquatic Divide in a while, but apparently this is a shorter game, which is why I'm willing to cast it, because Aquatic Divide has a tendency to get really bogged down in these choke points right here. Although the fact that we're seeing Etsuri going for Amph boss means that they actually can take advantage of the center lake. So, we could see this actually as a way of getting through the choke points. At any rate, we already have very rapidly the Southeast team coming in here with tanks coming in to take care of... Well, not much. I mean, it'll be able to damage one of the metal extractors, maybe get rid of this wind generator. But otherwise, not really do all that much damage. I mean, the commander should be able to get to it quite quickly. I mean, Dying Friend should see it and not let it do too much. Although, to be fair, it is burning the factory. That's, that's never really good. So that is damaging the ogre as it's being built. I mean, it should be built up in time to force the, the Kodachi to get out of there. And indeed it will. There it comes. There's a Kodachi being forced to regret having been born. And there's the Kodachi dead. At the same time, a couple archers coming in here from Etsuri. Try to see what they can do to 400's base. And they should be able to help a little bit with getting rid of this welder. But I think the welder's heavy enough that it won't be pushed around too much. I'm actually not sure. Let's find out. As the archers do come in here, get rid of the radar and start... Messing with the welder. Yep, no, they pushed the welder pretty hard. Whee! I mean, that... <laughs> Firepluck, a little annoyed by that, but at the same time, does have three ravens... Wow. Okay, I see what's going on. I see what's going on. Firepluck doing this classic thing. Fireplug's tendency to try to do a risky strategy. Possibly cheesy strategy. Go for it hard, and then if it fails, to resign. So I really don't know who's going to win because it kind of comes down to whether or not this probably comm bomb works. I'm assuming that's what's happening. Is the Ravens are going to come in here, kill the commander, come back, kill the other commander. And then if that happens, I guess it'll be a huge boon for the Southeast team. It will be a huge boon for the Southeast team. I mean, they'll have twice the economy at that point. And otherwise, it will be a massive blow to their team and probably cause Fireplug to resign. Also, unfortunately for Fireplug, they don't have an air pad, because if they did, the commanders would be dead right now. Like, the all the ravens would reload really at the same time, and then they'd just be done. At this point, though, the ravens have to be micromanaged. Like, this raven could get out of the out of the factory and start letting the other ones rearm. But, unfortunately, no air pad. So, nope. Still, though, the ravens are providing quite a bit of pressure. It's just, again, no air pad. No air pad being constructed. So it's just a matter of waiting for all these damaged ravens to get their rebuilds, or reloads. At the same time, though, we do have Fireplug, or sorry, we do have 400 coming in here with the Ogre, and that will be able to help out a little bit. Just to make sure the front line isn't too secure for the northeast te Northwest team. I mean, can't really get rid of this yet, though. Or it isn't going for it, I should say. It could get rid of it just fine, it just isn't trying to. At the same time, razors have been set up, so any attempts to destroy the commanders with those ravens will be quite difficult. At the same time, we do have the... Okay, not troops. Oops. What the... No. Ah, there we go. Sorry about that. I was a little bit confused. Suddenly, how I was supposed to turn off the messages again. Anyway, yeah, back to the game. So, we have Northwest team coming in and... Losing the front line. There's the ogre coming in there, getting rid of all that front line stuff, making sure that there's nothing being built that otherwise shouldn't be. And while the razor is up, the swift they're just operating as a complete block for that razor. It dies, but as a result, so does Dynefrone's commander. Firepluck managing to get quite a bit of success off of those ravens. Again, I kind of wish they had an air pad. The caretakers will help a little bit if they're for any damaged ones, but that's not really the point. The point is getting the reloads in parallel to get them all simultaneously, and that would be a lot faster, but we're not seeing that. So, bit of a shame, but that's how it goes sometimes. At any rate, we do have more ravens coming in here. Fireplug is still building them up, still getting more units, and probably going to go for the other commander. And at this point, Etsuri knows it. They're hiding behind Hacksaw, which is wise. Hacksaws do a really good job against ra ravens. It's kind of uniquely against ravens, but they do, that's kind of what they're for. So, yeah, they do fine. The only downside, of course, is that there's still this giant section of the map that's basically not being built up. There's one welder, but the ogre's coming in taking the front lines. I mean, the ogres can take the front lines where all the defenses are. It's like, good luck getting rid of any ogres that get to the back lines. 
Still, though, Firefly coming in here, despite the fact that there are anglers and a... Okay, there's one angler. There's angler, which is going to be zero anglers in a second. So, fair enough. But, yeah, there's still a lot of risk there. And an airpad is forthcoming. Okay, good. I'm glad to see that. At the very least, we know that an airpad is in the works, even if it's going to take a little while. Unfortunately, that... Well, that should be fine, actually, yeah. I mean, at this point... Southeast team, actually, the Southeast team doing okay, but the Northwest team is getting quite a bit of an economy, and they do have the Commander Corps in the middle of their base, so that reclaim could happen any time. And even without that, the Southeast team, well, okay, the Southeast team is actually winning on metal, largely because of reclaim, partly because of overdrive. So never mind, no, the Northwest team is way behind. They could reclaim again to take back some of this stuff. That would actually give them quite a bit too. Let's see, five, six, six fifty. Okay, it wouldn't be huge. It'd be like 20 seconds of getting close to even economy. It's not quite the same. But, oh, not quite. About a minute. About a minute of even economy. Still, though, it's just a matter of how you get that front line there. I mean, the Raven's coming in here, mostly for scouting purposes, actually, because I guess the owls. Owls should not really go there. I mean, they can see well enough, but wisely, Firepluck is giving the owls away from the anti air get what vision they can. I'm actually kind of curious, what vision does that give right now? Pretty much full radar coverage of the front lines. Okay, then yeah, that's good to keep that safe. It's definitely in a fine enough position to actually get the information it needs, while at the same time being in a close enough position that, or far enough away, rather, that it's not getting hit by the anti-air. So that's good. That's a good mix. You want that to happen. But yeah, the fact that the Southeast team is taking the entire center section not a lot the Northwest team can do, and now Southeast team so far ahead economically, with Cyclops Ogre coming in along the south, and a bunch of Ravens coming in, in the north to break up anything that's built up over to the north. Including this one racer that's making the owl rather regret having been born, but it's fine because the Ravens are going to come in here and should be able to save it or not. Nope, just double checking the Geo plan over here has not been taken. After that, I don't know, but it doesn't even matter. Northwest team throwing in the towel, and that is the Southeast team taking that win quite handily. Fireplux aggressive openings again work. But usually, like I said, it's all or nothing. Either they work or they completely collapse and he resign and they resign immediately. That's just how it works. That's how Fireplux does. It's very all or nothing. It's a little bit annoying in team games. At least for the people on their team. But it worked this time, so hey, it worked. Anyway, that's going to be that, and we're going to have one more match today. It's going to be a 1v1. Sparkles versus Google Frog. Sparkles, pretty much the more, quite an up-and-coming player. One of the most recent players that's been coming in quite strong. And Google Frog, who is, well, one of the main developers. Like, Google Frog is the primary balance designer and just general primary developer of the game. So yeah, it's going to be an interesting mix. I do think it's going to be a fairly even match. So I'm really looking forward to that. So we're going to be back with that in a couple minutes, so stay tuned, because it should be good. <laughs> 